Welcome to On the Couch with a Viewpoint. I'm Kim Taylor and I'm here with Abdi Jama, a student here at Northeast. Welcome, Abdi. Thank you. Abdi just became a U.S. citizen and he's a student here at Northeast. Abdi, what was the process like becoming a U.S. citizen? First, when you come here, you apply for a permanent resident, a green card. Okay. It takes you about a year. After you become a green card, you wait for another five years. I will say another four years. Then you apply for the citizen. Then when you apply the citizenship, you pay the fees. There is an application fee of like $680. Okay. It goes up like from year to year. Okay. And uh, then after that, the after application gets accepted and what would be next? You will be scheduled for interview. Okay. Then that interview is uh, is a test. So at the, at the federal level, they're gonna ask you about the president, the vice president, the Congress, the Supreme Court, all that stuff. But the state level, you have to know things like your capital city, state mm -hmm. capital city, your Congress of the state to the U.S. I have a feeling you probably know way more than I do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so was there a specific reason you wanted to become a U.S. citizen, that you wanted to move here? Yes, first of all, I was uh, reuniting my family, my mom and my brother, younger brother who lives now in Ohio, and my stepdad were here. They were here before you came? They were here before I came. Um, that's why I came here to reunite with them. The Somali government was functioning, then my stepdad was working for them, for the government, and he got uh, injured. Like he got hurt on the he job. Got hurt on the job. Okay. So they sent him over here. So, so how many years was it that they were already in the United States before you came? about six years. So you didn't see your family for six years? No, I did not. Wow. And so then they moved to Ohio or to Nebraska first? I first came to Ohio, but I stayed there for about a year. Okay. And that was, I started looking for work. So how long were you living now in Nebraska before you decided to uh, apply for college? Uh, first, I live uh, in Nebraska for about three months when I started applying for Northeast Community College okay. back in 2004. During that time were you trying to get your citizenship? No. No. I was not. I wasn't even dreaming of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I still had like four more years to go. Before you could apply? Yeah. Okay. I can't just apply it right away. Okay. When you come here, it takes you about a year to get your residence, permanent residence. Then it takes you about another four years to get your citizenship. So while you're waiting for that opportunity to apply to be a citizen, what does that feel like for you? I don't know. <laughs> does it feel like it takes forever to get there or you're just satisfied with being able to live here during the process? It's, I can argue, but both ways. Both ways? Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, you are satisfied to be here, to be able to work, to be able to go to school. And um, you still want to be a U.S. citizen because there is so much more coming with it. Like, you have more rights as a U.S. citizen than the rest of the people. You can vote. You can vote? Yeah, okay. vote. Um, you can work for the government, apply for a city job. You can take part of the democratic system in here. When Donald Trump was the president-elect and he started to talk about his ideas for immigration and his new policies, did that make you nervous? Absolutely. What about that m made you have concern? It makes me, uh, when you are a leader, um, I can go back to my country, the people are all good, but the leaders, if they tell you the wrong things, 
there will be a mess. So the weight of the leader counts. That's, that's what I'm going to. Do you have friends and family still in Somalia now that he's made these changes that they're scared or that you feel a certain way about what's coming? I have uh, families of my friends that were due to come in here and right after the executive order, the executive order came out, mm -hmm. they were turned away, like they were told. They were turned away? Yeah, they oh. not, they no more coming here for about 90 days. So after 90 days, nobody knows who is gonna come. Right, it's and they were ready to come here. They it were was ready, yeah, they in were process. ready to come here. They were in the process of coming here. What is something that you looked forward to that was um, a, being a citizen in the United States that you were gonna get to do? And I don't mean voting or working at a government job. Was there something here that happens that you get to do that you didn't get to do in your home country? I usually used to watch movies. Movies? Then I was thinking when I came here, everything's gonna look like Hollywood. Ah. Like, <laughs> so when I came here. You were disappointed? <laughs> a little, <laughs> a little yeah. bit. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, it's all about surviving, you know. Surviving there? Surviving, okay. yeah. You go, if you are very lucky, you go to school. Here, you, when you first came here, you get your uh, driver's license. Okay. That's my, I, I learned how to drive here. Um, was that fun? That was a lot of fun. A lot yeah. of fun. You get your own car. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Over there, if you have, if, if um, someone you know owns a car, that's a privilege. Privilege, yeah. So are there certain things in Somalia that you miss that we don't have here? Over here, if I go to a <laughs> restaurant or a subway, I have to tell them no pork. No pork, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and over there, they just know. Over there, it's like your food your own food. Right. So if I look from there, but there is really nothing more than that that I can tell you I miss. Um, do you think that Northeast Community College and Norfolk and Sioux City have been welcoming to you while you've been here? Absolutely. Okay. Um, not only me, but when I talk to a lot of my friends or the people who used to live here before 2006, okay. they all still have Norfolk in their minds. So really? Yeah, they usually ask me about Norfolk. So what are your future plans after you graduate from Northeast? Um, first to look for work. Okay. <laughs> to get a decent job. And what do you want to do? What are you going to school for? Uh, that's information technology. Okay. What does that mean to you? What, what do you want to really do? Do you want to work for the government? Yes, absolutely. I want to work for the government. It's like, it's not just like me looking for a work or compensation, but like it's a payback to be a servant or an employee for the government. It's like you're working for the people too. So. That's, that's a really impressive statement to me because I think most people here don't look at their jobs even their dream jobs as giving back to their country. So that's pretty amazing. I have a lot to give back. You have a lot to give back? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we're really glad that you're yeah. here. Thank you. <laughs> when you found out that you became a U.S. citizen, did you celebrate? Yes. And what did you do? Um, I came back to South Sioux City. Okay. Um, I met, I get a hold with my friend and my wife and we went to Texas Roadhouse <laughs> and we, uh, we ordered steak. We ordered steak. Yeah. <laughs> so we, that was a big celebration. Great. Yeah. Abdi, thank you very much for having this interview with us. And um, I, I think the information that you have given us today um, will enlighten a lot of our community. So thank you for coming. Thank you, you're welcome. Thanks. I'm Kim Taylor. And that's On the Couch. See you next time.